Praise the Lord. Be seated. Like all of you, when I received uh, the text from Chad that his dad had passed, it was uh, it was difficult to say the least. Then. When I uh, received the call that uh, Brother Curry had planned his funeral service in advance and specifically requested that I would be the speaker, I uh, well, still uh, feeling honored and humbled. When I think of all the men that had such a relationship with Brother Curry who could have easily been asked to stand here. Um, I don't take that lightly. I was the Home Missions Director of Maryland, D.C. And uh, the Tenney and the superintendent of Louisiana said to me, we got a lot of preachers down here hanging around, not doing anything. Of course, that wasn't Brother Curry. He was uh, assistant. He said, Brother Mike, you come down here and get every one of them you can. <laughs> he meant it. He really did. And uh, so I'll never forget it. Talking with the Currys on the campground the first time, and then them coming up and us riding around in the car to see if they felt a particular burden for some specific location. That was so awesome. It was a very exciting time for me and for our district. We had a lot of guys come. Some that didn't make it very long, and others who stayed a while and didn't make it. But I don't know what it was about the Currys, both of them. It was just something I knew these folks were going to stick it out no matter what. All right. Yes, yeah, sir. All right. Amen. And they yes. did. And they built an awesome work here. There's been a lot of things said today that I could easily simply repeat from my own personal experiences. And yes, to me also, especially when it was just us, he was Charlie. Uh, Brother Curry. And then somewhere he got it in his mind, he wanted me to ordain him bishop. And I'm thinking, there's a lot of guys who can do that. But he insisted, and that was a very... Just one of the greatest honors of my life, and I appreciate that very much. He asked me to do this because he knew I was going to preach. <laughs> and I will be respectful of your time, and I have a built in clock. It's a painful back. <laughs> And the, when that alarm goes off, I promise you, I will get done. Okay. Well, then you must be feeling something right now. <laughs> I, uh, I was in uh, Ohio in uh, September. Uh, one of the very best friends I've ever had in my entire life. Brother Bill Sisko passed away, and I had a chance to be there. Physically, I haven't been able to do a whole lot this year, but I was able to be there, my wife and I. And the Lord gave me something that I had never seen before. I, I love the Word of God. There's nothing boring about the Word. It never gets old. And with Probably to me personally, the, 
single greatest thrill of my life was whenever I'm reading a verse I've read countless times and all of a sudden I see a word I've never noticed and it just unfolds and causes that rosebud of a verse to blossom into this beautiful thing that I've never seen. And uh, I had that happen. And I'm going to share this with you because this helped me. I remember standing by my dad's bedside in March of 06. And they called us in that morning and said he, he won't make it through the day. And, and I'm standing by his bed and we're singing together and I can't hardly talk. And it's weird, I know. I happened to somehow look at my watch and it was almost exactly noon on the day he passed. I heard this voice that said, absent from the body is present with the Lord. Amen. I saw that I, in, my, in my mind, my spirit. I saw that. I saw that my dad was not about to cease to be being raised in the Navy and moving many, many times, it was normal. You packed up one house and you moved to a different location, moved in a new house. Yeah. You didn't cease, we didn't cease to be a family. We didn't cease to exist because we moved. We just changed houses. And the moment I heard that voice, for the first time maybe in my entire life, I understood that my dad was not about to cease to be. He was changing houses. And as you might imagine, I have scripture for that. Second Corinthians 5, beginning with verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands. He, he turned to the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from him. You know, it takes a long time to get to the place to be able to understand that. Where you're not trying to hang on to this with every bit of the strength in your grip. But you can actually say, boy, that day when I get to switch houses is a good day. We're in this week home, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. I uh, experienced it this year. Uh, something that I had experienced a few years ago the first time. Brother and our church had cancer. And... Uh, he was a spiritual man, walked with God, he was very sensitive to God. And I was, my wife and I was at his house one evening while he was in the midst of this. And he sat there and sighed and groaned repeatedly because I knew he was in pain. And, and he was, he was telling me how much condemnation he was under because he just couldn't focus to pray because he hurt so bad. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me and I said, Mike, you don't realize the whole time you've been sitting here, you've been praying. Psalm 79, 11 says, let the sighing yeah. of the prisoner come before thee according to the greatness of thy power. Preserve thou those that are born and die. I said, Mike, if, if even just the sigh of the sinner that doesn't even know what they're sighing about, that can't explain it, right. can't describe it, right, right, yeah. is heard by God as a plea, as a prayer. Yeah. 
Yeah, come on. Do you not understand that every single side of yours, every one of those groans, all right. yeah. is a prayer that God is listening to. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that which, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up in life. We've got to get this. I know the world thinks Christians, true Bible-believing Christians are crazy. And that's only going to get worse. Yeah. They think we're weird, that we're weak. They don't get it. If the life you're living today is not the life you'd want to die by, then it's not worth living by. Amen. Amen. And if your idea is to live your life today and then change it at the last minute so you got something, a life worth dying by, you don't have that guarantee. Amen. All right, Amen. All right tell it. Brother Curry made this video Tuesday morning. Somewhat while a little later, he walks out of the house, standing outside this building, talking to the guys working, and falls over, and that's it. There was no time. Except because he walked with God, he knew it was it was coming sooner than later, and he planned it out himself. So notice this verse: I'm not groaning to die; I'm groaning for that new house. Groaning to abandon my loved ones. I'm groaning to see the fulfillment of that which I've given myself to all these years. Now, he that has brought us for the self same thing as God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident knowing that. Whilst we're at home with the body, we're absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, rather, say and willing rather to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. True Christianity is supposed to affect the way you see death. I'm prepared to die. I'm not ready to die. I've got more to do. I feel like I got yeah. more to do than I've got than I've done. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. But Hebrews 2 says. That the purpose of Christ's coming was to, li- to deliver those who followed him from the bondage of the fear of death. Mm-hmm. Yes. And if your faith has not reached the place yet, mm-hmm. then it's delivered you from the bondage of the fear of death. Mm-hmm. I've got good news for you. There's more you can have. All right. Oh, Amen. More faith you can have. Praise God. Because let me tell you something. Inherently, those who have fear of death know that something's not quite right yet in their lives. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about some people that sit on seats every Sunday. Amen. That's right. They're afraid to die. Yeah. Right. Why are they afraid of dying? Okay, I won't go into that. Matthew 22. Without reading too many of the scriptures here for time's sake. Verse 
the uh, Pharisees came to him and said, Master, there were seven brothers, I think it was, and the first one died and had no children, so the second one married her. He died, had no children. The third one, third son married her. And they said, in, in, in uh, the hereafter, which one uh, will be her wife? Or which one will that, will be her husband? I'm sorry. Okay. Therefore, the resurrection, whose wife shall be of the seven? For they all had her. Jesus answered and said unto them, You do err. Yeah. Yeah. Not knowing the scriptures, yeah. nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but are as the angels of God in heaven. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Now what that means to us is we are not here today grieving. Correct. For Charles Curry. We are grieving for ourselves. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That is right. This is just the old house he used to live in. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. He is conscious, alive, and himself. This moment. In the presence of God. Yes. That's what the Bible teaches. Some people believe in what's called soul sleep. That's because they're confused. Because death is the separation of the soul from the natural body. And the body sleeps the soul does not and here's the verse where that one word that I had missed I've used these next verses and then this is the end of it I'm not, I won't be done in two minutes but this is the last verse text I have used these verses at gravesides of believers for 52 years and miss this word every time. First mm -hmm. Thessalonians 4.13 But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, mm -hmm. that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. That's what, why we're not sorrowing over his loss today. We're rejoicing for him. Yes. He crossed the finish line. Yeah. In high school, I ran the 440. That tells you how long ago that was. That was yards. Today it's 400 meters. It's too long to be a sprint, too short to be a distance run, so you just die. <laughs> you start out desiring to win the race because those weren't rubber tracks back then. That was cinder. Yeah. And you, if you fell in those tracks, you ended up with little black spots in your palms and hopefully not in your face, but it could be there too. Right. Yeah. So after you round that last curve and you're looking at the finish line, you're not really thinking about your position relative to everybody else's. Can I get across that line so I can legitimately fall on the grass 
<laughs> just because I finished the race. Yeah. Let me tell you something. <laughs> you live long enough, that finish line is everything. I have said it. It is not me being weird. It's me being me. I have said it. It's well known. If I die, do not be the person that prays me back to life. <laughs> when I get across that finish line, leave me alone. That's been the focus of the whole life, is to cross the finish line. You're only praying me back here for you. You're not praying me back here for me. That's right. No offense, but I just can't believe that Lazarus was that excited. And I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe, there it is right there. Mm. <laughs> not supposition, not hy hypothesis, but down to earth, absolute rock solid faith. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, here it is. Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. The body's here on earth. Yeah. Who's he bringing with him? Who's coming with him? Who's he bringing with him? For this we, we say unto you by the word of the Lord. That we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Mm -hmm. Those whose bodies are asleep here on the earth. What is it we're not going to prevent them for? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of the archangel. With the yeah. trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Yeah. Why? Because the soul that's been awake in Jesus mm -hmm. all that time has got to come back with Jesus yep. to be reunited with the body right. and resurrect yes. so that we can be with them, those of us that are alive and remain. Yeah. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven and shout our voice the archangel and the trumpet of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. This is not minor. Amen. This is major. Amen. That every person we've loved that died in the faith, that died in Christ, the dead in Christ. Uh -huh. All that noise is going to be made, only the dead in Christ is going to hear it. Oh, uh, Nobody else is going to hear it. It's not quick evening. All the resurrect, all the dead, all, the dead are all going to be, all the rest of the dead are going to be resurrected for the great white throne judgment. Uh -huh. So when he comes back with it, with the, uh, the, the the shout, the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, the only people that will hear all that the dead, are the dead in Christ. All right. And all those souls that died in Christ will come back with him to be rejoined because that's death. Life is soul and body together. Yes, sir. Death is body and soul separated. Yes, yes sir. Here it is. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. This is the comfort that God has 
provided for you and I today. Yeah, amen. Yeah. I know some things. Others here know other things. Family knows most things. Things haven't been always been easy. Charles In fact, a lot of it's been very difficult. Last time we talked on the phone was about that very difficult trial he's gone through here. At the end, maybe one of the most difficult trials of his life. It been easy. But comfort. Comfort. My dad was diagnosed with emphysema 10 years before he got saved. Not as he was being retired from the military. It took him 10 years to finally submit to God. He lived uh, with emphysema for 30 years when the normal life expectancy is seven. Preached the gospel. Even when he got so bad he was on full time oxygen, he would take the cannula off and preach God because the anointing for the anointing he didn't need it. And when the anointing lifted, he put the cannula back in so he could breathe. It was painful to be around him. You hear him struggle for every breath. My dad's not struggling for breath. No, sir. Praise God. Praise God. No, sir. No, sir. No. No. I had the privilege of having my hands over my dad's head when he got the Holy Ghost. And uh, I have comfort today. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes. My God is the God of the living. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. Yes. Part of this man that's dead is the old house he's been in. Yes, sir. He's already been fitted for the new one. Uh, that's not that's not the ramblings of weak-minded people. That's not the that's not the, the crutch that us weak human beings who are Christians use to walk on. It's the hope that gives us strength no matter what comes our way. No matter what we go through, we have hope. We have hope. There's comfort in that. There's hope in that. And I know the Chad and Sister Melissa, this is not how you wanted to get to this day. But God is Control of it all. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And he he knows the day, he knows the time. Amen. It was exactly what used to be done. I want us just to thank God for a moment, please. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Could you just do that. Oh, I Personally, you. in your whatever way you're comfortable. Uh, could you just give God Thank thanks for how much He loves us, how much He cares for us, in Jesus' name?